Hello, hello, welcome back to Underrated Movies. I'm your guy, I'm your man, Mr. Alton Henry. Today I'm going to talk to you of another film that I believe is severely underrated. Well, underrated to where I believe it did things a little bit different because with style and just story and, you know, just for what it was at that time. Um, it is the original Mission Impossible starring uh, yours truly, Tom Cruise, Gene Reno, uh, Ving Rhames. And um, Kristen Scott Thomas, Vanessa Redgrave, the original, directed by Brian De Palma, one of the most classical filmmakers at that time to tackle, I guess, a more mainstream film. Um, and this is a story introducing Ethan Hunt and his team of MI6, or is it MI6? No, MI6 is... <laughs> MI6 is, is 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 James Bond and shit. Oh my god, I can't believe I got that mixed up. <laughs> Dang, what, what what is their group? Is it MI6? Okay. <laughs> no, MI6 is Britain. Yeah, that, yeah, no, 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 no. Hold on. Oh my god. I can't believe I can't. Oh my god. I don't. I can't believe. MI6. MI6. Yeah, that's British intelligence. What's, what's, uh, Tom Cruise's? It ain't the CIA. Anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> Introducing Ethan Hunt and his team on a mission in the original Mission Impossible, released back in 96, where Ethan Hunt is on a mission to recover a mysterious disc that has intelligence, has secret CIA intelligence that could list people, names of people working in the, in the, um, in the intelligence agency could give them away anybody who was undercover and uh, they're there to retrieve it suddenly his team is killed and he is set up and he goes on the run to clear his name a story you've heard before but what I really liked about this film more so than the other continuations of the franchise and we're I think on our eighth one the trailer the newest one uh that just premiered like four or five days ago what i really loved about this original and it actually took me a while a while to watch it it took me when i was in high school when i was in high school when i finally watched it i immediately fell in love with it i wasn't really on board with that at first the first mission impossible i really watched i think was uh, number four um, ghost protocol wow that was over 10 years ago 2011 then um then i end up seeing this one i have not seen number two i have not seen number three yet but right here this particular one is I love the direction, I love the style. This is Brian De Palma's standout as a director, tackling other genres, to, especially in the action realm of you know uh, of spy films, um, just action films in general. Now he doesn't particularly do action, Brian De Palma. I mean, he's done crime, drama, war, but to see his style tackling basically something that's a little bit more for everybody, you can see his style kind of imprinted all over the um, all all over the screen. In fact, I think this is closer to his most experimental, and I believe he may have some love for the franchise, Mission Impossible. And I love like the neo noir look, the 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 Dutch angles that pretty much half happens most of the time, especially when there's tension um, that takes place. And this is not really an action heavy 
Mission Impossible film. This is more of a suspense thriller, and it feels very old classic. I mean, yeah, it's 96, so there was... I feel like with Paramount movies, I feel like during those 1990s era, they were more political action, spy, espionage movies, and it feels very classic. It feels very um, old school that you don't really see anymore. And what I, was, I thought was really interesting for the first 20 minutes, Ethan Hunt doesn't really seem like the standout. It was more of Vince, Vince Vaughn. And when his team gets killed or presumed killed, then it leads up to Ethan Hunt, who pretty much takes over the mantle of the, 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 of the film. And we meets these scenarios of okay i'm being set up um i gotta clear my name and find out you know i might have some survivors from the team to begins to formulate his own team to break in the cia to steal the list that was retrieved from the mission that they were on to to look into it to see you know what the info was all about um this is a very, very crafted, well-crafted uh, spy thriller. Again, Brian De Palma's signature is all over it. So really, it's not really the actors or the main, any of the stars. It was really, for me, the director's signature that really stood out to me. I feel like all the other ones. And again, I can't say for number two and number three because I haven't seen them. But this one right here. Felt old school espionage, like spy thriller. Like it, it reminds me a little bit of Red Sparrow, another underrated spy thriller with Jennifer Lawrence. Um, and I also love the music. I thought to me this was had to be one of the best scores in any Mission Impossible film that's come out. Uh, one of my favorite sequences, and the movie's been out for over 20 years so I'm gonna spoil some details where John Voight I said did I say Vince Vaughn earlier John Voight <laughs> John Voight um, the leader of the team who was presumed dead suddenly appears after Ethan Hunt breaks in the CIA to retrieve the uh, the disc and let's not forget the iconic um, scene where he breaks into the CIA vault and tries to steal it and it's so suspenseful. That's what I love about this film. It's so suspenseful. You don't really need heavy set piece action sequences. You just need well built suspenseful scenes and you can craft a very good suspenseful film. That's what I love about it. Like it gets you on edge even at the smallest scene and if any character messes up you know it's 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 doomsday and i love the feel about this film when it when it gets you in that mindset if any character messes up or doesn't do anything to outsmart the other you know it could it could spell dire consequences and you you feel that in this film the scene of the sequence that john john voight reveals that he's actually alive there's a scene where he Ethan Hunt makes a quick phone call to his bosses to let him know that, you know, he thinks you know, there's some flakiness going on. And he hangs with the phone. The next thing you know, you have John Voight just appear right in front of Ethan Hunt. And you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You're just as shocked as he is. Like, you think, I mean, did he just fake his death to... Is he working for another team? Or is he, what is he doing? You don't know. So that shock really kind of happens right there. And then he slowly walks up to Ethan Hunt. And then he pretends like you're, you're quite a hard man to catch up with. They, you know, he coughs and pretends he's, you know, sick. And Ethan Hunt's like, <laughs> so and then this is what I love about this sequence here. The next sequence where... John Voight is explaining what he's been going through since Ethan decided to leave and pursue his own team and break into the CIA. 
He tells him it was his boss, Kittredge, that set him up and believed he was trying to take the this for himself or who knows what. Then once Ethan Hunt tries to piece the um, scenes together, and it flashes back to the sequence where Ethan, uh, Ethan Hunt's team was being set up and assassinated, it literally shows the perpetrator that did it. It was John Voight who faked his own death and then explode exploring up you know the car killing out killing one of their agencies and I actually love this sequence here where Ethan imagines a a potential um, accomplice that may have helped John Voight carry out the betrayal of the mission and then there's another perspective that John Voight actually sets out that it could have been him or it could have been the accomplice that exploded this vehicle that had one of the agents in it uh, with the intent of killing him. I like that what if possibility of Ethan Hunt thinking because he didn't want it to be true. But then John Voight was like, okay, maybe, maybe you don't know that they showed him actually doing it. So <laughs> I actually love that sequence and the music behind it. I believe those music piece was called betrayal that was i thought was just beautiful a beautiful sequence that brian de palma kind of made it was actually quite shocking to see to show that reveal that the characters um betrayed the team then i also love the final action sequence where um you witness that you know john voight's really the antagonist and then Ethan Hunt finds out who the accomplice is and tries to stop him from taking uh, the disc and making off with it. And you have this whole sequence on the train. And I love it that there was no music for the start of the sequence. You just hear the noise. You just hear the, 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 the sounds of the, of the train going on with the wind. And then the camera zooms close to Ethan as he tries to make his way to uh, John Voight. Then the music comes in, then you see a, one of Ethan Hunt's teammates betray him, who was actually undercover for John Voight. And then you get this whole just sequence of him trying to fight John Voight to retrieve the disc or to take him down. And then they go into the tunnel. And I like, it's not like they're like fighting or something. They're like tug of war and trying to stay on the train pulling each other trying to toss each other off and trying to hang on the train while they're while they're trying to you know hold on for dear life and the music just gets more intense and it's just kind of scary like you like it, it it gets so like just intense you don't see action scenes like that no more like maybe for the exception if you do like like steven spielberg but you don't see that you don't see suspenseful action like that like rarely um, nowadays you don't really get that and I actually love also the sequence where the team the CIA team was trying to pin uh, Ethan Ethan Hunt I'm gonna say Ethan Hawk Ethan Hunt as the secret um, agent that that's been getting Intel away from the CIA and, and this little um, restaurant he blows up the fish tank and less the fish tank just kind of just blows up everybody and everything's all in slow motion. I love that sequence. I love that action scene. There's quite a few action scenes I really liked in here, but the, you know, they're not like action action what you're normally seeing. Like car chase scenes or shootouts. This film doesn't have all that. It doesn't have the trend of what every action film has to follow. It sacrifices that. It does something kind of different and it plays it along with I guess I would I guess the situation and then characters basically trying to outsmart one another and I, I thought that was very interesting with this film where these characters were trying to outsmart one another by not really following the trends of of action tropes or with, of what's you know what's what you normally see in action films and that's what I really loved about this film this 
of the original Mission Impossible. If you have seen the original Mission Impossible, comment below. Let me know if you have what you thought about it. Is the other sequels better than the original? To me, the original, I think, is always going to hold a special place in my heart. I just don't believe it's going to capture the same vibe as the other ones. I mean, yeah, each, you know, I really, do, I really have been liking Christopher McCormick's direction of how he's been taking the franchise with um, Rogue Nation to Fallout. He's really been, he, he's been awesome. Of taking over the franchise and I'm looking forward to seeing the new ones that's coming out later this year part one and then I'm assuming the part two of I assume will conclude uh, Ethan Hunt's or Tom Cruise's journey playing this character uh, comment below let me know if you have seen Mission Impossible the 1996 Brian De Palma directed and honestly, I would love for him to come back to direct maybe part two or just another spy thriller. I wish he came back. I wish he came back and they had him direct it. I think he's been blacklisted doing these straight to DVD movies. You don't really hear hear about him or hear him anymore. But his movies tend to be over dramatic a lot. So comment below. Let me know what is your favorite Mission Impossible film? What is your favorite underrated Tom Cruise film? And what is your favorite underrated movie?